Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Rosemary Market Bag, which you can see here in the photo. I also have my sample one here. This is a fairly easy market bag to work uh, once you know how to work your front and back post double crochet stitches. It's worked all as one piece from the bottom up even into the continuous handles. This is the second market bag in the Marvelous Market Bags Crochet Along, so welcome uh, if you are here for that. Um, if you haven't already, you can check out the first market bag pattern, which is also here on my channel, and stay tuned. There will be three more market bag patterns coming out over the next few weeks. So thank you so much for joining me for the market bag today. You're going to need a 100% cotton yarn. I'm using the Pima Cotton by Lion Brand. It is a worsted weight cotton, number four, and each ball has about 186 yards. You're going to need two different colors, and you're going to need one ball of each color. You are also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and links to these items can be found in the description. Also there in the description, you'll find a direct link to the free written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. Take a look around. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. For our bag today, we're going to start by working down at the bottom Using our color A, I'm going to be using this vintage color. Uh, you're going to start, the bag is worked in rounds. So we're going to start by making a slip knot. And here you may use a magic ring if you'd prefer. Or what I'm going to do today is chain four. And your chain four is going to count as a double crochet the first chain three and then this is going to be our center we're going to be working into the fourth chain from our hook so into the fourth chain from your hook you're going to work 11 double crochet stitches including that starting chain three which counts as a stitch you'll have 12 double crochet stitches in total There's 10 and 11 double crochet. So including that starting chain three, we should have a total of 12. Once you have your 11 double crochet and your chain three, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. For round two, you're going to chain three, this counts as a double crochet stitch, and work a double crochet back into the same stitch as joining. You're then going to work two double crochet stitches into each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, you can join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, your chain three, and at the end of this round, you'll have a total of 24 double crochet stitches. At the end of round two, you're joining with a slip stitch into your first stitch and chain three. For round three, we're going to skip the stitch the same stitch is joining because we have our chain three coming out. It's going to count as a double crochet. You're then going to work two double crochets into the next stitch. Next, double crochet into the next stitch and work two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. One double crochet into the next stitch 
followed by two double crochets into the next stitch all the way around when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch at the end of this round you'll have a total of 36 double crochet stitches for round four we're going to chain three and double crochet into the next stitch. Your chain three counts as a stitch. You're then going to work two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then work two double crochet stitches in your next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round, you'll have a total of 48 stitches. For round five, we're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Work two double crochets into the next stitch. You're now going to work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Followed by two double crochet stitches into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 60 stitches. For round six, we're going to chain three double crochet into each of the next three stitches and then work two double crochets into the next stitch. Next work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches and two double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And two double crochet into your next stitch. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. For round seven, chain three, double crochet into each of the next four stitches, and work two double crochet into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches.
and two double crochet into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Followed by two double crochet into your next stitch. All the way around when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and at the end of this round we'll have a total of 84 stitches. For round 8 we're going to chain 3 and work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Work two double crochet into your next stitch. Next, we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. Followed by two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Once I get the knot out of my yarn. <laughs> there we go. So two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. One double crochet into each of the next six stitches. Followed by two double crochets into the next stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round you'll have a total of 96 stitches. For round 9, you're going to chain 3, work one double crochet into each of the next 6 stitches. and two double crochets into the next stitch. Next you're going to work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. and then two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. One double crochet into each of the next seven stitches followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. At the end of this round you're going to have a total of 108 stitches. For round 10, chain 3, double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. And work two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, double crochet into each of the eight next eight stitches. And 
and work two double crochet into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches, followed by two double crochet stitches into your next stitch until you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch in the top of the first stitch. And at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 120 stitches. At the end of your round 10, you're going to have a fairly large circle completed. You're going to have a total of 120 stitches. Now for rounds 11, 12, and 13, so for three rounds, you're going to chain one and simply work a single crochet into the same stitches joining and then into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with the slip stitch in that first stitch, chain one and repeat. So go ahead, work three rounds of single crochet stitches that will bring you to the end of your round 13 and then meet me back here. Once you have worked to the end of round 13, this is what your bag bottom will look like. Now at the end of round 13, we're going to be switching to our color B. So I've pulled back just one stitch. I have one stitch remaining and you're going to switch to your color B in this final stitch. To switch to your color B, using your color A, you're still going to insert your hook, yarn over and drop a loop. At that point, you can drop your color A and then pick up your color B, place it on your hook, and pull through. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, and you can fasten off your color A. You're then going to continue working the bag sides beginning with your color B. So for round one of the bag sides with color B, you're going to chain one and simply half double crochet into the same stitches joining and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Once you come all the way around, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and chain one. For round two of your bag sides, you're going to work in the third loop of each stitch all the way around. And into that third loop, you're going to work a double crochet stitch. To work in the third loop, we're currently looking at the front of our half double crochet stitches. If you turn your work so that you can kind of see the back of your stitch, you will see your top back loop here, and then just directly below it, you will see another horizontal loop running just below. This is your third loop. So this one, this one, this one, all the way around. This is your third loop. So for this round, we're going to be working in that third loop only. You're going to work in the third loop and work a double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. So yarn over under that third loop only, work a double crochet in that same stitch as joining, and then in the third loop only, work a double crochet in each stitch all the way around. What it's going to do is it's going to push the top of your stitches forward I'll show you here in just one moment and it's going to give you this nice little ridge of texture. So working in the third loop, double crochet each stitch around when you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round two, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. 
We're now going to work another round of textured stitches, this time working front and back post double crochet. So what we're going to do is chain one, working around the same stitches joining, and when I'm working I like to work around the chain one and the stitch. You're going to work a front post double crochet. So yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook around the post of that next stitch from the front through to the back, out through the front, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two more. That's your front post double crochet. You're going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. To work your back post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook from the back through to the front, out through the back again around the post of the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two more. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work a front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, and repeat. All the way around until you come to your first stitch, when you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. You will have finished round three with a back post double crochet. You're going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. We're going to continue working front and back post stitches, this time working front and back post half double crochet stitches. You're going to begin row round four by working a chain one and then a front post half double crochet around the post of the first stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in front, insert your hook around the post from front through to the back, out through the front again of that first stitch, yarn over, drop a loop, and yarn over and pull through all three. You're then going to work a back post double crochet or half double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work, insert your hook from the back through to the front, out through the back again around the post of the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. You're going to repeat that all the way around, working a front post half double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post half double crochet around the post of the next. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round four, uh, you can uh, join your color A once again. You can either do that uh, as we did before by in your final stitch, yarn over, uh, draw up a loop, and then instead of yarning over and drawing up a loop with your color B, you can put your color A back on your hook and then pull through or you can simply fasten off and join with a slip stitch, it's up to you. Once you have your color A attached, you're going to join with your slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. We're going to at this time fasten off our color B. Now for round five using our color A, we're going to work half double crochet stitches in the third loop all the way around. So yarn over, find your third loop beginning with that first stitch at the back of your work, insert your hook, and then complete your half double crochet. Working in the third loop, you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around using your color A and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. At the end of round five, we're going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. 
For round six, chain four, which counts as a double crochet stitch and a chain one. You're then going to skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next. You're going to repeat this all the way around, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next until you come around to your first stitch and you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four. At the end of round six, join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four and chain one. Now for round seven, we're going to work more half double crochet stitches, continuing with our color A, half double crochet into the same stitch as joining and then half double crochet into the first chain one, next chain one space. Half double crochet into the top of the next stitch and half double crochet into the next chain one space. You're going to repeat this all the way around joining with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of this round we are going to switch back to our color B. At the end of round seven, you'll have joined your new yarn and uh, you're now at the repeat of the pattern for the bag side. So at this time you may want to grab the free written pattern on richtexturescrochet.com because I'm not going to work uh, the entire bag side here, but I'm going to leave you to work it on your own and then meet me back here for the handles. So after round seven for round eight, through to 21, you're going to repeat rounds one uh, through to seven of the bag side. So starting with your half double crochet in the third loop only uh, all the way around. That's the round one of the bag side. So you're going to repeat rounds one through to seven twice more. And then for rounds 22 through to 25, repeat rounds one to four twice more or sorry, once more. And then you're going to meet me back here for round 26. And we'll pick up together there. And uh, work the top of the bag and the handles. So go ahead, work those repeats, and uh, then meet me back here. At the end of round 25, this is what your work is going to look like. You have your bag bottom. You're going to have one, two, three, four rounds worked, uh, or four stripes worked in your color B, and three stripes worked in your color A. At the end of round 25, at the end of the round four repeat, you'll have joined your color A once again with a slip stitch. Uh, into that first stitch and have joined. For round 26, working with our color A, we're going to chain one. And now working in the third loop only, we're going to half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Okay, for round 26, half double crochet in each stitch, working in the third loop only of each stitch all the way around and then join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 26, you've joined with a slip stitch into your first stitch. We're now ready to begin the bag handles. So for your bag top and handles for round one, you're going to begin by chaining one and then with color A working a single crochet into each of the next 30 stitches. So 
beginning with your first stitch, single crochet into that first stitch, and then each of the next 29 for a total of 30. There's 10. And 20. and 30. Once you have a single crochet worked in the next 30 stitches, you're going to chain 40 and this is going to form the base of our handle. Now if you'd like to change the size of your handle you can. You can simply chain more or less chains. Just make note of how many chains you work so that you can work the same on the other side. So today I'm going to chain 40 and 40. Then on your bag you're going to skip the next 30 stitches. When you do this you want to make sure that you're not twisting your chain as you work. Uh, so you want to simply skip the next 30 stitches And then you're going to single crochet into each of the next 30 stitches. That's 15. And 30. You're then once again going to chain 40 chains or however many you did for your first handle. There's 20. and 40. You're then going to skip the remaining 30 stitches and join with a slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch. You're then going to chain one and now working uh, in like continuing to work around so don't change direction. You're going to single crochet into that first stitch and into each stitch and chain stitch all the way around. So you're going to work a single crochet in each of the next 30 stitches 
And then when you come to that long chain, you're going to work a single crochet into each of the chains and then continue working all the way around. I'll work uh, across to my chain and uh, just show you what I mean. And we're going to work a total of five rounds of single crochet. So you're going to single crochet into each stitch, including each chain stitch, all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and uh, then chain one and continue. So I'm almost to that first chain. You can just work it into the chain space if you would like. Um, when I was working my bag, however, I just found that the stitches uh, laid more nicely when I worked them into each chain. So when you come to your chain, you're simply going to work, and it is a little bit tedious, a single crochet stitch into each chain all the way across your handle. At the end of each round, you're going to have a total of 140 stitches. Once you have completed five rounds of single crochet stitches, it brings you to the end of round six of the bag handles, and you're going to fasten off, weave in your ends, and your rosemary market bag is complete. So that's it, that's all there is. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe, check out some of the other market bag patterns here on my channel, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting! Bye.